with the books and a lot of the stuff that you've done, which I've heard, Tony, and I think you, you, do, you do a brilliant job. Um, what, uh, how do you get your inspiration? How, how do you get yourself into creating new products and, and developing new ideas? I've got a mind that works at a million miles an hour, but I find the best creative work comes when I just switch off. So, and that's becoming an increasing theme of my work actually as well. Although it ran through all three books with Virgin, when I switched this morning, for example, I woke up and my perfect morning would involve not checking the phone for the first couple of hours. Checked the phone, had a couple of emails that needed replying to straight away. Um, spoke to a couple of people on the phone about work-related matters. And my mind was just in kind of quite a hectic place. And then uh, before I came here, I went to a yoga class and I arranged to meet someone at yoga and switched the phone off, put it into airport mode. A couple of hours later, having simplified and kind of decluttered my mind, I was brimming with ideas and uh, I just felt in a much kind of calmer, more creative and happier place. And that is just consistent day after day. So, so what I try and do is I have at least one two hour block per day where I don't check any screens, any internet, normally two hour blocks if I can, sometimes three if it's a great day. Um, it's quite hard to fit in with a busy job where you need to be checking a computer or you need to be in front of TV screens like I do. But I do find that has a profound impact for me. And I think when we're checking our phones for new messages or emails, we're getting small little dopamine hits all the time. But our, our minds are very much in kind of, not quite fight or flight mode, but beta in that it's very active, very alert. And really the best creative ideas and the best relaxation comes when you step back into a kind of alpha state. Mm -hmm. so, so that's something that also is popping up a lot in my work at the moment, just calming the mind down, de-stressing, and having moments throughout the day where you can really step back, which then gives you more energy for the rest of the day. It's, it's kind of a, a generalization here, but, but somebody who's either <clears throat> lost their job, trying to find a new job, finished university, what do you think the best assets that someone could or should have in order to achieve as much as possible in life? Well, one of the um, topics that comes up again and again on Zestology is I ask at the end of the interview, I ask people to come up with uh, one book that they'd recommend and one tip for living life with uh, more energy, vitality and purpose. And two things, actually two different aspects come up again and again. The first is people say, make time for yourself. And that might sound very um, counterintuitive if you've lost your job and you're looking for a new job or you want to change your life because all you want to do, especially if you're into NLP, is work on that. But making time for yourself and they're really quite specific about it, some of my guests. They will put into their diary, two till four, I'm going to yoga, and mm -hmm. it's in the diary, you know. And four till six, I'm gonna go home and watch House of Cards, and that's in the diary as well. <laughs> I mean, it's amazing, really, but we live our lives at such a frenetic pace that I suppose it's effective for people to do that. So definitely prioritizing time for yourself. But then the other thing that's popped up again and again is being open to new experiences and going outside your comfort zone. That comes up again and again. Being able to adapt and change. Um, the way that the media world was 20 years ago is totally and utterly different to the way it was now. And for me working in media, if I hadn't kind of changed and tried to learn and adapt and move on, then I wouldn't have been able to survive in it. And I think I noticed that, especially those in business who get to their 60s and 70s and are still really cracking it every time. They're the ones who've managed to change and adapt, whether it's their business or themselves, probably both. And you've had what, is it two, 300,000 downloads? Over 300,000. Over 300,000? Yeah. Tell me how that happens, because I'm sure a lot of people, as you said, are probably sweating their, their heads. <laughs> yeah. Well, my stuff got better. I actually listened to some of my early stuff and I think, well, it was okay. Bearing in mind what I knew at the time. Mm. I mean, you and I are now both NLP trainers, mm. but I was just a practitioner at that point. Um, I like to think that the stuff I do now is better, but the stuff that still sells the most is the stuff that came out then because it's kind of got that history on Amazon, on, on iTunes and everything else. Um, I got the screen test at Sky and I, I used a lot of NLP skills to get myself into the right frame of mind for that. Firstly, just in terms of preparation, I did a lot of modeling. Um, I uh, called up my friend who was a stylist and, and I showed her one of the presenters on Sky I said, can you make me look like that? And she said, the first thing you need to do is cut your hair 
and get all that bleached blonde highlights out of your hair. So my <laughs> my 2005 bleached blonde highlights hair had to go, which is a real shame because it was a good look. You loved it. <laughs> I did love it at the time. But you know what? It was probably for the best that I had to cut it. So, so I did a lot of NLP modeling. I did some hypnosis. I did some goal setting. I wrote out um, with the date, I'm a presenter on Sky Sports News. And that came true almost to the date that I wrote it down, kind of five months in the future. So, um, so NLP definitely helped.